Dear friends, other than Joshua, it was only Caleb who did not wish to be seen as a grasshopper. This man who wholly followed the Lord had a heart that could kill giants. Well, in this lesson, welcome to the world of Caleb and his God. I welcome you, dear friends, to yet another session of Through the Bible. It is indeed God's grace that brings us together to fit on His living word, the Bible. In our last study, we were looking at Joshua's last leadership in battlefield, where he mounted sudden attack upon the combined army of the northern forces, organized under Jabin, king of Hazor. The list of kings and their lands saw the long and bitter campaign that Israel had taken for years to conquer Canaan. By the time we stepped into chapter 13, lots of land remained unconquered, but Joshua is probably 100 and is too old and weak. His next duty is now to assign lands to the specific tribes and make sure that the promise of Moses given to the two and one half tribes, Reubenites, Gadites, and Manasseh, is fulfilled beyond the east of Jordan. Dear friends, we are now almost half past the book of Joshua, and I welcome you again as we look at Caleb's demand for Hebron and other campaigns without Joshua. Caleb was born a slave, was a spy with Joshua, and brought back a favorable report during the time when they went to spy out the land. According to Joshua 14.11, Caleb had found the fountain of youth. He had faith to forget the past, faith to face facts, and faith to face the future. Verse 6 of chapter 14. Now the men of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said to him, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, at Kadesh Barnea about you and me. I was forty years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. And I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my brothers who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt with fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Caleb was a man who wholeheartedly followed the Lord. If you want a recipe for a long life and a good life, here it is, verse 10. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the desert, so here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Caleb is now 85 years old, and yet he can say that he is as strong as the day Moses sent him into Canaan as a spy. During the wilderness journey, all of the first generation that came out of Egypt died except Caleb and Joshua. These men, along with ten other spies, brought back reports concerning the land of Canaan. The question was, could Israel conquer the land? Joshua and Caleb were certain that with God's help, Israel would be victorious in taking the land. The other ten spies saw giants in the land and wanted to return to Egypt. They wanted to go back to slavery, brickyards, the lash of the taskmasters, chains, shackles and groanings under the burdens. The Lord Jesus said, No man, having put his hand to the plough and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. God had called Israel to go into the land of Canaan, and Caleb believed it could be done. During those forty years, I suppose that often someone would say to Caleb, Oh, brother Caleb, isn't it terrible out here in this wilderness? It's so hot, it's forty-five degrees today. Caleb would say, I really hadn't noticed. I guess it's pretty warm, but I was thinking about those grapes of Eskol that I saw. And I was thinking about the city of Hebron. Our father Abraham liked that place. 
and I like it too. And that's where I am headed. Caleb, even in the wilderness, could think of the future. He had a great hope. It kept him young. These 40 years in the wilderness killed off the rest of the crowd, but it didn't do a thing for him. He was healthy. The others grew old, but he grew young. The giants in the promised land made the others tremble. They thought of themselves as grasshoppers, but Caleb thought of God. There was freedom from fear in the heart of this man. As John Knox would say, one with God is a majority. God was bigger than the giants. Caleb reminds me of Adoni Ram Judson who spent 12 years in Burma without any results. The board that sent him out didn't sense the situation nor what a tremendous effort they had put in Judson. So they wrote him a very diplomatic letter suggesting that he should come back home. They asked him what the prospects in Burma were for the future. His reply was, The future is as bright as the promises of God. His confidence in God was the reason he could stay in the wilderness of Burma all those years. Although he suffered a great deal and it took a long time for any sort of revival to break out, it finally did. His time was well spent. Are you enjoying all the spiritual blessings that God has for you today? You may be saying, I have lots of trouble. I know that people have many troubles in the course of their lives. My heart goes out to them. There was a man who said his favorite Bible verse was, It came to pass. When puzzled, people asked him what he meant by that. And he replied, When I get into trouble and problems pile up, I turn to my verse and know my troubles have not come to stay. They have come to pass. There are a lot of things you can complain about, friend. And I too have my share. But what about our hope? What about the future? Caleb, for 40 years in that wilderness, was enjoying all the spiritual blessings that were his. Because Caleb believed God and was a man of faith, he said, this is verse 12 of Joshua chapter 14, Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified. But the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. Let's take a closer look at the place he was to conquer. He was to campaign against a hill country and he was going to make Hebron his home. Here's some history on Hebron. You will recall in Genesis that Abraham went to Hebron which means communion. In Genesis chapter 13 verse 18 it says, So Abraham moved his tents and went and lived near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. It was a place of fellowship, communion with God. If you were to read the previous verses, you will realize that this was the close to the place where Lot and he, that is Abraham, made choices. Lot chose the greener pastures along the plains of Jordan, whereas Abraham chose to stay by the trees of Mamre at Hebron. Abraham seems to have found this place as a refuge, a place of communion with God, alone with God on the mountain, amidst those trees. Lot chose to stay close to Sodom and Gomorrah, greener pastures, but as we know, a place of wickedness and eventually Lot had to move out from that area. This was Abraham's place of rest. He and Sarah along with Isaac, Rebekah, Jacob, Leah and the sons of Jacob, except for Joseph, were buried here. This was a place with a great heritage. Later in the history of Israel, we will see that this was David's capital city, from where he ruled for seven and a half years. It was here that he was anointed king. We've seen a little bit about the past and future of Hebron, but during the time of Joshua, it was a well-fortified city located at the highest point in all of Palestine with giants living in it. 
What would you and I do when faced with choices? We will opt for a place which offers the maximum returns with a minimum effort. Well, this was not the case, however, in Caleb's life. Here was an 85-year-old man attempting to climb a mountain, then to break down a well-fortified city and finally kill giants in order to possess and live within it. Caleb is the second senior most man in all of Israel. He could have easily had the privilege to make the first choice. He could have taken the path of least resistance. I don't think any single individual would have opposed such a great man. But what do we see here? Caleb stakes a claim for the most difficult of all places. Talk about taking a threefold challenge all at once. A mountain, strong walls and giants. Joshua by now knows too well Caleb's go-getter attitude. He blesses him and sends him on his way. Verse 13, Then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. What was the secret of his energy? Well, it was not some energy drink for sure. 1. He knew his God. Three times you have the phrase, followed the Lord. Verse 7 it says, However, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Verse 8, Because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Verse 14, So Hebron has belonged to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, ever since, because he followed the Lord, the God of Israel, wholeheartedly. In Daniel chapter 11, verses 32b, we read, The people that do know their God shall be strong and do great exploits. Caleb didn't have a superficial knowledge about God, but he had an experiential understanding of who God is because he followed him. That experience gives him enough courage to attempt great things for God. Following God only makes us go places and do things we never thought we would ever do. He leads us to climb mountains and take paths that have never been trodden. He directs us to break down barriers and defeat giants that oppose us. Well, do you know God personally? Or do you simply know a lot of facts and figures of what He did thousands of years ago? Follow God now and in obedience, you will never regret it. In verse 10 of Joshua chapter 14 we read, So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Caleb knew his strength. He knew how much he was capable of. Well, do we have a clear understanding of our strengths and weaknesses? Do we know our gifts? This man has a lot of confidence. When was the last time you heard an 85-year-old man speak like how Caleb spoke? Well, let us develop an attitude of knowing we can do all things. With God's help, all things are possible. So let's stop proclaiming how weak and frail we are. Instead, let us fight the greatest enemy, which is our own selves, and strive to win. When we know we are right and strong, we can conquer anything. We can conquer our world. He knew the challenges. We've seen where Hebron was located. Mountains, fortified city and giants. Caleb didn't attempt to conquer Hebron with his eyes closed. He knew the challenges he would have to face. It is important that we have to have a certain amount of understanding, especially when we are going to take on new projects and new ventures. It is necessary for us to weigh the pros and cons and to recognize the dangers. When we are forewarned, we will be forearmed. He knew God's promise. Verse 10, Now then, just as the Lord promised. Verse 12, Now give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. 
Well, here we have again an 85 year old man who has not forgotten what God said that he would do. As we get older, we tend to forget. But let's never forget the promises of God. The Bible is filled with promises. Let's take our claim and enjoy what he has given us. Let us stand on the promises of Christ our King. Many of us are satisfied just sitting on the premises. Well, God keeps his word. Let's take bold steps, bold actions based on the promises of God. Caleb knew the challenges he would have to face, but his understanding of God and his promises superseded the seemingly great problem and with an attitude of confidence and faith, Caleb does the impossible and gains victory. Dear friend, are you overwhelmed with problems? Take courage. Look beyond the problem and focus your thoughts on God and His promises. And in faith and with confidence, fight, fight to win. Go now, press on to the goal that's ahead. Live in the present and do your best. Leave all the past, its joy and its pain. Grow close to Jesus and definitely you will win the race. We saw that Caleb was a member of the tribe of Judah and that God gave to him the city of Hebron. Now in chapter 15, we have more about this remarkable man. Chapter 15, verse 13. In accordance with the Lord's command to him, Joshua gave to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, a portion in Judah, Kiriat Arba, that is Hebron. From Hebron, Caleb drove out the three Anakites, Sheshai, Ahiman and Talmai, descendants of Anak. You see, the land old Caleb wanted was in giant country, and he was as ready to take on the giants now as when he was a young man. Verse 15. From there he marched against the people living in Debir. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiryat Safar. Othiniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's brother took it, so Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day when she came to Othiniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got off her donkey, Caleb asked her, What can I do for you? She replied, Do me a special favor. Since you have given me land in Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. Caleb's campaign resulted in greater attempts of conquering and possessing the land. Godly example begets godly offspring. Here we see Caleb's family attempting great things for God. Othiniel, son of Kenes, wins Caleb's daughter in marriage when he captures Kiryat Sefer. Here is an emerging young leader. He was the first judge after Joshua's death. Later, we see Aksa, his daughter, asking her father for the springs and Caleb gives it. Fathers and mothers, our lifestyle should speak volumes of our commitment to God and His Word. We can claim and say a lot of things, but children observe our actions. If we want to bring up children who follow the Lord, the children need to see their parents taking steps, taking action that are out of the ordinary. They need to see victory in our lives. Our walk talks, and our talk talks. But our walk talks louder than our talk talks. Aksa asked for the springs and Caleb gave it. Ask and keep on asking and it shall be given to you. We have a heavenly father who did not spare his own son so that we can have life. Now that we are his children bought with a price, will he not give us all things? Let's have the same boldness and simple faith and ask God, our Father who promises to give whatever we ask according to His will. In chapter 15, we have a detailed description of Judah's territory. Many of these names are unfamiliar to us and we tend to skip these sections. However, the fact that Judah was the first to have their allotment is significant. Judah's priority is spelt out in Genesis 49, 8-12. Judah, your brothers, will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, O Judah. You return from the prey, my son. 
Like a lion, he crouches and lies down, like a lioness who dares to rouse him. Now, and it continues till verse 12 about the greatness of Judah. Now, Reuben was actually the eldest, but because he defiled his father's bed, he lost the blessing. The tribe of Reuben was characterized by indecision. They never excelled. If you remember, in our last study, they received the southern section of the land on the east of Jordan. It was a desert area bordering Moab. The tribe of Judah were go-getters. Caleb is one good example. And they didn't wait for things to happen. They initiated action. This kind of initiative enabled them to obtain lands much faster than the other tribes, as well as more than sufficient land, that they were able to offer land to the second eldest tribe, Simeon. Now Simeon was guilty of extreme violence and anger and cruelty, and he too lost his position as one of the eldest. You'll find this again in Genesis 49. The next possible heir would have been Levi, but he again, due to violence and anger, was dispersed all across the land. You will notice throughout the next few verses that the Levites were not to have a territory of their own, that is in Joshua chapter 15. But they were set apart to perform priestly duties and they were going to be scattered all across the land. Judah was the next and his act of being willing to remain in prison in place of Benjamin during Joseph's reign in Egypt sets him apart and God in his grace and foreknowledge raises Judah as ruler. The dominance of the tribe of Judah was great that the southern kingdom came to be known as Judah in later years. David and ultimately Jesus came from this tribe, fulfilling the blessing prophesied in Genesis 49 that the scepter would never leave this tribe. As we close, remember dear friend, let's know God personally by following him. 2. Know our own selves and develop our strengths. 3. Know the challenges that we have to face. And finally, know God's promises. In faith and confidence, like Caleb, from the tribe of Judah, let us trust in God and his promises and overcome all the obstacles that may come our way. And let's take the initiative to conquer and win the victory that God has promised. Dear friends, I hope you are all enriched by today's lesson. The faith, hope and enthusiasm of Caleb need to push us out of our chairs. The jail of this 85 years old man is so remarkable and contagious that his children inhabited Hebron and drove out three sons of Anak, the Zions. Caleb is a great example of living faith. The within was accompanied by walks without. It is a great lesson that nothing good will simply come by for free. Only those who trust God and walk towards their goals and dreams with Him will inherit not just Canaan but Hebron too. God's blessing to you, dear friend. Did you like this program? Give us a missed call now and you may be the next winner.